you. Let's turn our Bibles to the book of 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 21 and 22. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 21 and 22. The title of the message is, Are You Running From Sin? Are You Running From Sin? Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 21. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepare unto every good work. Flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace, with them that call on the, na- call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Brother Caleb, can you please pray for the message? Thank you for, for saving us from our Lord and uh, giving us eternal life in heaven and of course giving us an opportunity to meet once again on this Sunday morning, Lord. Each of us who is in here, Father, thank you for helping us to be here today and uh, as we listen to your word today and as we dedicate today this Sunday to you, Lord, while we pray for peace for us Amen. Are you running from sin? The title seems maybe kind of peculiar. Are you running from sin? There's a story of a young girl who just got saved, and she wanted to join a local church. And one of the members asked her, so you just got saved, so how is it different for you? And then she said that, you know, before I got saved, I knew I was a sinner, but after I got saved, I realized that I'm a greater sinner. And then the man who asked was pretty shocked by the answer. And she continued. She goes, when I wasn't saved, I was a sinner running after sin. But after I got saved, I'm a sinner running from sin. And she grew up to be a you know, godly Christian woman. It is very important for you and I to understand that after you get saved, you must run from sin. Amen. It's not about I'm facing my sin, I'm going to go through my sin, I'm going to show that I'm, I'm a big guy, I'm a big girl. A lot of people have a wrong idea in this day and age. And we hear it, we discuss it all the time. We need our young children, we need any of the persons to need, they need to go through some things. And I want them to go through that thing in order for them to understand what it is. And a lot of times you allow your children to go through certain sins that they should never be near. For example, if your kid comes up to you and says, you know what, dad, you know, mommy, I want to go to a party. It's a clean party. And this is a high school kid asking you. It's a clean party. There's no bad music, there's no bad food or drink, there's no drugs. You know, we're just going to sit down and chat, have a nice dinner. Okay, and if you're a parent, so naive and ignorant to let that happen, it's on you. Yeah. What do you think is going to happen at those places? You're literally, if that kid is saved, that kid is running after sin. Yeah. What should that kid ha- should have done? Running from sin. Say no to the party. Yes. But as a parent or as a guardian, if you allow that to happen, you're literally letting your child walk to the snare, walk to the trap, just like that bear trap, and get caught in it. And after you get caught by a bear trap, I don't know about you, you're going to maybe not able to walk again like normally. That's how you know, strong those traps are. And in your life, there's a lot of those bear traps around you. In order for you to avoid it, in order for you to not be damaged by it, in order for you to not have a permanent scar and, you know, limp, you have to run from it. 
as Christians, you and I are not strong just to go through it and be faced with it and be like, you know what? I'm better man than that sin. You're not. Amen. You're not better woman than that sin. Right. The sin will get a hold of you, and there's no way you could defeat sin by constantly going after sin. That's it. You used to be a drug addict. But you know what? I'm going to show to people that I've overcome that sin oh, no. by going to a marijuana dispenser every day. I'm just going to walk by it. I'm going to walk by it. So 200 out of the 365 days, you know, you walk by it and nothing happened. But, man, your life just crashed. You lost the job. Your spouse left you. You heard that you have this terrible disease. Man, and then you don't want to live anymore and you still go through that same dispenser, what do you think you're going to do? Right. You know what? I have reason to do it today. I have reason to do it today. And you're going to go and get that marijuana, and you're going to smoke, and you're going to commit that sin. Yeah. It is a common example for any Christian. When you let that sin be present in your life, if you see that sin all the time, it is inevitable that you're going to do it. It is just a matter of time. That's why the Bible says in 2 Timothy 2.22, flee also youthful lust. Abstain from all appearance of evil. God wants you to just run away from it. There's no reason for you to be close to it. If there's a fire, do you feel like you want to just walk by it? I mean, if the wind direction changes, what happened? Just like the fire in paradise, California, yeah. recently it happened. When the wind direction changes, cars get caught. You know, I'm pretty sure when you're driving, you know, cars could go fast. You know, you know what? I just book it. I press the gas hard. I'll be going 60 miles per hour in no time. And then those fire can catch me. No, sir. It's going to catch you, and it's going to consume you. Yep. Just like that sin. You think, ah, oh, you know, I see it right there where that piano is, so you can't really reach out to me. But once the wind comes and it's on fire, it could just burn you, yeah. and it could just kill you, just like that. So as Christians, you have to realize that you need to have a testimony like that young girl. After she got saved, she said, this sin is greater. I feel like I'm a greater sinner than before. I don't know about you guys. After you got saved, you should be feeling that I'm a greater sinner than ever before because those have been magnified, magnified to you. Yeah. And because now you know the truth, you're yeah. growing in the word of God, you know how foolish and how sinful you were. Amen. And you realize that I've been running after sin. But even after you got saved, Christians, you need to realize that you live a life where you've been running after sin yeah. instead of running from it. And that is a bad testimony for you to have, not just outwardly, but internally, right? Have you ever looked at yourself in the mirror and how pitiful and shameful you are when it comes to living a sanctified life? I mean, sanctification should be a fruit of a justified life. Sanctification should be a fruit to those Christians who accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior. Sanctification should be your everyday action. However, sanctification is furthest from so many people. I mean, John 17, 19 says, And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. I mean, that's what the Lord said. The Lord himself, right? Right? I sanctify myself, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. 1 Peter 3.15. I mean, you have to, right? And be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Sanctification is the will of God for every believer. 1 Thessalonians 4.3 says what? 
for this is the will of God, even your sanctification. You know, sanctification and holiness is so important that it came out 1,666 times in the Bible. And that tells you how important your sanctification is. I mean, first of all, what is sanctification, right? Sanctification, basic meaning is separation. I mean, are you separated from sin? That's how you're going to be sanctified. And of course, and you are sanctified, which means that you're separate unto God. So Bible meaning of sanctification is to be set apart by God, for God, from sin, and for a holy life. Amen. Right? If you take in any of our Bible study classes, you know, class that my brother teaches, I mean, that's a phrase that you will hear. The Bible meaning of sanctification is to be set apart by God. God has set apart you and I. Yes. How? When we accepted Christ as our Lord and Savior, our old man is dead now. Amen. We have a new man. Yes. We're sanctified by God, for God. From what? From sin. Yes. For what? For a holy life. Then if your life is not exemplifying holy life, then you're not sanctified. You have to be set apart. You have to. If you're not set apart, then you're attached to it. Right? right? Just like a Lego. I'm sure you guys love Lego. And I grew up building Legos, yeah. right? So if you want to build something, you know, you're attached to it, right? If, you, if it's not complete, what happens? You set it apart when the bricks are apart. You want to become a complete sinner? Man, just attach everything. Everything that you see, right? All the worldliness, just bring it in. That's where wrong experiences come in, right? You know what? I need to experience this so that I could empathize with people who fail in the future. I mean, that is not a smart thing to do, right? You know what? I want to be that brother. I want to be that sister. You know, be able to help someone who have alcoholism, right? So I'm going to start drinking. I want to know how it feels, right? Man, that's your, you're on the road to destruction, yeah. right? Uh, you know what? I'm going to tell these young people, it's not a good thing to date before, you know, dating not to be married, but just to fool around, right? So I'm going to try, right? I mean, you know, you're going to go through a lot of heartbreaks, you know, maybe, you know, unplanned things happening. It's not for you to experience to be sanctified, right? It's not for you to play around with sin in order to be sanctified. In order for you to be sanctified, in order for you to be set apart from sin, in order for you to be separated from evil, in order for you to be separated unto God, you have to flee. You just have to run. Yeah. I mean, if, so, if the sin presents itself to your face, you run. Amen. If sin presents itself to your ears, you just run, yes. right? A lot of people just think that just seeing is the only thing. Of course, seeing is one of the biggest reasons. But many times you hear things, yes. and it causes you to run after sin. Amen. And for example, isn't that funny? You know, well, we're, we're, human we're human beings that are attracted to Negative things, destruction, and sin. You hear someone says, ah, there's an accident. <laughs> You're going to run after and see what just happened. At least majority of you. Maybe some of you don't even care, right? I mean, the other day, street preaching, we're at the corner, uh, Olympic in Vermont, and two cars were making left turn. You know, and one car tried to pass the front car, and hit the bumper, and then you know, the right side of the rear was, you know, destroyed. Uh, not completely, but pretty bad. There were a lot of debris on the ground. So what do people do? 
people flock to it. You know, they just try to see what happened, what happened, right? Jay Flavel once said that, it is easier to cry against 1,000 sins of the others than to kill one of your own. It is very easy for you to cry against every other person's sin. Because it's really easy for you to see, right? Yeah. Uh, man, he is not clean today. She is not dressed right. Oh, man, he's not talking right. Man, she has too much perfume. He is eating too slovably or whatever the thing is, right? Man, she is, you know, not spending more time like she should with me, you know? And like, man, wow, bad word came out of her. Bad word came out of him. So it is very easy for you to cry against 1,000, tens of thousands sins of others than to kill one of your own. So you have to realize that, man, what kind of person have I been? Have I been examining myself first? Have I been examining all my sins first before I cry out against others? You know what? There are certain times, of course, if there's a discussion going on, if they're talking about certain issues that we should be against, right? You know, I mean, bars, alcohol, drugs, right? You know homosexuality, you know, everything else, like, against the word of God, of course you speak up, right? But when it comes to your own self, you have to realize, have I been a person who tries to always cry against other people's sin, but never examine my own, never killed any of my own sins, right? Because if you don't, you're no better than any person out there who's not sanctified, yeah. right? You haven't set yourself apart from anything. Because the author of sanctification is whom? Right? It's God himself. And if you are saved, what do you think? When you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, there's certain condition that God wants you to be after. Right? So you can't be running after sin. You have to be running from sin. 1 Thessalonians 5.23 says what? And the very God of your peace sanctify you wholly. God wants to sanctify you wholly. Not just parts of your life. All parts of your life. From head to toe. Then you have to look at your own life. Am I sanctified? Do I try to live a holy life from head to toe? Right? And that means 24-7. Yeah. That, that is not only church time. I guarantee you, inside the church, very few, if not all of you, will not use the F word. Right? I mean, are you going to say to each other, oh, F this, F that, inside this church? <laughs> I haven't heard it yet. So, you know, you're not. Because, you know, this is a, place to be holy and sanctified. But however, outside the door, it's a different story. I mean, we're not going to play recording of your life here, yeah. right? But if Lord does it, especially at the judgment seat of Christ, I mean, how many of you guys will be ashamed? Especially when it comes to your tongue. So is your tongue sanctified? It's very important because tongue causes fires. Everywhere, yeah. right? Because of your tongue, you could destroy or you could help a brother. Because of your tongue, you lie or you tell the truth. Because of your tongue, you could lead someone to the Lord or you could damn them to hell. Because of your tongue, it shows whether you're holy or unholy. So when you look at your tongue, think about it. What does your tongue like to talk about? Does your tongue get sweet feeling when it starts talking about other brothers and sisters? Right? I mean, whether it's good or bad, because it eventually turns to bad, right? Because 
There, there's so much a person can talk good about somebody. It runs out. Then when good things runs out, what happens? There are bad things that you have to replace it with. Then if there's no reason for you to talk anything about the, another person, especially brothers and sisters in Christ, then you don't need to. There's some other things to talk about in life. Talk about the sun, talk about the trees, the weather, you know, talk about something else. What do you got to bring someone into your tongue? You know, that's a part of the thing. A lot of times Christians are not wholly sanctified because they just can't get enough of talking about other brothers and sisters in Christ in a negative, negative fashion, right? Hey, do you see how that person dressed today? You know what? Dress code is very important, right? I'm not saying anything against it, but there are young Christians out there who just got saved. They need time to grow. There are older Christians who've been backsliding, so they need time to come back. You could be that person one day. So it's not for you to you know, judge them. It's not for you to gossip about them outside the church, inside the church. Your job is to pray for them. Amen. And hope that through the word of God, through preaching, they change. Yes. Hey, it's not for you to be like, you know, I, I'm so holy. You know, I never missed a tie in my life. <laughs> You're like, I never missed a dress in my life on Sunday, right? And then you see a new Christian come in or older Christian. No bueno, you know. <laughs> Wearing pants today. Man, it's too tight, you know. And of course, pastors, pastor wife, you know, let them do their job, right? I mean, they'll be able to counsel them, talk to them about it. But it's not for you, you to be that judge right behind their back. So watch your tongue. I mean, maybe your actions are holy and separated. But many times, that last thing, your tongue is the one that's always causing you. It's tongue that's always burning your house down. How many times you and I have rebuilt our spiritual houses because of God's grace, right? Because of his mercy. We're building it again and again and again. Think of it like this. You're doing well, and you build a foundation. Now you're, you know, building doors, windows, attaching all the other stuff. But suddenly, you know, fire started. So one of the rooms burned down. And that's you, your Christian life. It's going to take maybe until you die and go to heaven for a house to complete. But you want to make it as complete as possible. Amen. You want to make it a place where you, at least you could dwell, right? Yeah. But for many, it's so dirty. It's like your spiritual house is so dirty, polluted. No one wants to go in. Why? Because no sanctification in your life. Because when you should be sanctified by the word of God, you're sanctified by other things. When you should be sanctified by listening to preachings, you're listening to other things. When you should be sanctified by looking at godly things, you're looking at ungodly things. When you ask, how are we sanctified? Bible has all the answers, right? Yeah. You're sanctified by truth. You know, John 17, 17 says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Where with us shall a young man Cleans his way by taking heed there to according to thy word. Amen. So in order for you to be sanctified, you must spend much, much time in the word of God. Yes, because it purifies and cleanses you. Amen. If you're not spending much time in the word of God, don't think that you'll ever be sanctified. Yeah, that's Simple as that. If you don't read your Bible, or you don't study your Bible, you don't meditate in the word of God, no chance. I mean, there's like, Zero chance that you'll be sanctified. Because Bible reveals sin. Yes. 
Bible is the purifying substance for you. You know, if someone's, someone gets, too, they, how should I say, they take too much drugs and they overdose, how can they be saved? They got to get those things out of their system. They need to be purified. You and I are taking a lot of junk on a daily basis. Lots of sin. Even though some of you really want to be sanctified, you're, not, you're running away from sin, but you can't run away from every sin. Yeah. Right? right? Because it's certain sins that are faster than you. Yeah. It catches up to you. Right? I mean, I'm talking about people who try to live holy life. I mean, there are certain people, you know, they're slow as, you know, anteaters, right? Oh, uh, sloth, they're like, oh, yeah, just catch up to me. I mean, you're literally going backwards. You're running after sin, right? You know sin's right behind you. You know, instead of running away from it, you know, you're going, you're going running backwards, walking backwards to it. Well, when that sin does inevitably catches up to you or you run after it, how are you going to be purified from it one of these days? Through the Word of God. And it reveals how sanctified you are by how much time you spend in the Word of God. If you don't spend much time in the Word of God, you're not, you're not that holy. I'm sorry. I mean, you could try all you want. You could try to be like Buddha, right? You could try to be like Dalai Lama. You could try to be like all these monks out there. All they're trying to do is what? trying to separate themselves from worldly things and trying to make their mind, you know, empty, yeah, empty like one, yeah. let the devil come to them very easily, That's you know. Right. When you try to be empty, you know, you're giving yourself for the devil to come in. Amen. That's why you got to be careful with yoga and all those That's stuff, right. like meditation and those things. I mean, we have brother and sister who experienced it, right. you know. Just because you're saved doesn't mean that you're not going to be filled with the right. devil, right? You really can. Amen. I mean, a lot of churches will, they don't even know the doctrine, so they don't even touch it. You're saved. Right. Your body and soul separate once and for all. So you're going to go to heaven no matter what. Your soul's going to go to heaven no matter what. But why do you think that we pray that we be filled with the Holy Ghost? Yes. Because if you're not filled with the Holy Ghost, you're filled with a different spirit. Right. right? Why do you think that person who's not filled with the Holy Ghost can commit such a terrible sin even though they're Christians. Right. So-called Christians commit murders, yep. deaths, you know, a yeah. bunch of wicked sins. Why? Because they're filled with a different spirit. Right. So it could happen to you. And when does that happen to you? When you're not wholly given to the Lord. When you're not wholly being sanctified from head to toe. You just have to remember that if I don't have much Bible in my life, I'm very unholy. Yeah. Simple as that. If I don't have much Bible in my life, there's no way I'm running from sin. I'm running after sin. Because the more that you stay away from the Word of God, where do you think you're going to spend more time on? All the things that are sinful the world, the flesh, and the devil. Those things. I'm telling you, when I'm in the Word of God, I do feel like I'm, you know, getting cleansed. It's like, man, all this dirty Amen. stuff that I've had, reading this good old King James Bible, man, I feel like, man, I'm getting purified, you know? I'm really getting cleansed, detoxed, you know? I feel like I'm at a, I'm just washing myself away you know, deep cleaning is happening, right? But for some of you guys, you never go deep because you look at it for 10 seconds. Like, okay, what's the verse of the day for me today? Uh, yeah, one, again from Proverbs, again from Psalms, right? Uh, my favorite chapter, Psalms, you know? There's like three verses, five verses, six verses. <laughs> okay, do you expect yourself to be wholly sanctified by picking the shortest chapter in the Word of God, and you say, I'm done with it? Man, it's like a little kid. When parents tell you, eat your greens, right? Eat your vegetables. You get one 
one piece of, you know, green, whether it be, you know, broccoli or something, that you tell mom, man, I ate my vegetable today. I had my feel for entire month. You know? It doesn't work like that. You gotta eat the whole broccoli. Yeah. You know, you gotta eat the whole vegetable, you know, lettuce, whatever it is. Then when it comes to the word of God, you can't just spend small amount of time and think that you're going to be sanctified. You have to spend more and more each day. If you want to stay dirty, it's up to you. Just stay dirty. You know, be a smelly Christian. But if you want to be cleansed, if you want to be purified, if you want to be, you know, holy in the sight of God and man, you definitely want to spend more time in the Word of God. Because the cleaner you are, the better smelling you are. I mean, who wants to be next to a smelly person? Right? You just jumped into a mud full of trash, and you came up, and then you sat next to me. Am I supposed to be very happy? I mean, if you do that every single week, you know, I mean, we all go through certain things. This week, that week, it's different. But if you do that every single week and you don't change, then something's really wrong with you. You're like, you're telling God, you know what, I don't want to be sanctified, Lord. I don't want to live a separated life. I want to live an integrated life. You know, I want to live an integrated life with this world, the devil, and the flesh. And you know what's going to happen? You will die. If you live after the flesh, you shall die, according to Romans 8.13. That's your end. If you don't live a sanctified life, you're going to die. God's going to kill you, die. especially if you're saved. He'd rather have you home earlier than stay here, ruin your testimony, ruin his testimony, yeah. and damning others to hell because of you. You want to die right now? Then there's a solution. You know, just live in sin. And get deeper and deeper in sin. But you don't want to go out like that. You don't want to end your Christian life like that. And this one does not only apply to older people as young people are looking at older people. It applies to every single age. Yes. Yeah. Just because you're young doesn't mean that you're safe. Right? I mean, sometimes these junior high kids are a more, lot more wicked than people who's in their 40s and 50s. Why? Because they're exposed to all this media and technology and social media and all that junk out there. So they are full of sin. So age, age does not matter. And one of the reasons why you're not sanctified, Christians, is because you have lost sight now. You have lost sight. You lost focus on the future. Many times, Christians are not sanctified because they don't look at the future. Their focus is not on the Lord Jesus Christ. It's on everything else. You're not sanctified. One of the main, main reasons, not because, you know, you let your flesh control you, you give yourself the devil and everything, it's because of love of money. Love of money will make you compromise. Love of your money is root of all evil. Love of money will guarantee that you won't be sanctified in your Christian walk. Right. Then you have to look at yourself. I mean, even young ones now think about money more than ever before. I mean, when a kid should be asking for, like, G.I. Joe's or Barbie dolls, right? Yeah. They're asking for, like, this outrageous stuff now. You know, they're like six and seven. Yeah, I want a big, I want, I want this gorgeous mansion, you know, yeah. where I have like 10 bedrooms and 10 bathrooms, you know, you know, with like five garages and stuff. Why, why would the six-year-old say those stuff, right? Yeah. I mean, because their love of money has grown, you know, exponentially every generation. You need money to survive. You work hard as a Man, woman, as a Christian, especially head of the house, you have to provide for your family. 
So you have to work hard, you know. Money is needed. But once you start loving money, then you're in trouble. You know, you could try to be holy, but you can't. You're going to be in situations, many, many situations, because you chose money rather than God, because your love is in the money instead of the Lord Jesus Christ. You can't be holy anymore. Job, right? You know, you can't love the Lord more if you take this job. It compromises it for many, many reasons, right? There's a lot of, you know, functions, worldly functions out there. It gets time away from you and the Lord, everything. But, you know, you get more money. The benefits are good. Compensations are good. If you're not sanctified, there's no way you're going to reject that job. You're going to accept it. You're like, look, I'm going to give you more tithe. <laughs> Lord doesn't care about your tithe as much as relationship with you. Lord doesn't care about your tithe as much as you being sanctified. People don't understand that sometimes, right? Lord doesn't need your money. It's his anyways from the beginning, right? What he wants is your heart, right? right? Then if your heart is not willing to be wholly sanctified unto the Lord, especially when it comes to money, forget about it. Then you have to examine your heart today. Man, have I been prioritizing money over the Lord? I'm telling you, as the world gets more wicked and worse and worse, the economy gets worse and worse, you know, inflation gets worse and worse. It's going to be harder for Christians to live in this wicked world because everything's involved, you know, this and that, which is unholy. But Lord promised you and me that he'll provide us our needs. In any situation, whether it's good economy, bad economy, inflation, no inflation, any situation, Lord says he's going to provide your needs. Then you cling on to that promise. Amen. You think God will ever lie to you? No. I could lie to you, you could lie to me, right. but God will never lie to you. Amen. And we have a proof in the word of God. Thank you, Lord. Then if you have that faith in the Lord, then sanctific sanctification becomes a lot easier. Many times because of your unbelief, you can't be sanctified. Like, can Lord really, can Lord really do this, do that? If Lord says he's going to do it, he's going to do it. It's just not at your time, per se. The Lord has his own time. You know? So you have to wait. Be patient. Have some perseverance. You know? No one says that Christian walk was going to be you know, slam dunk every day. Right? Then, I mean, you and I should be always 100% holy. We should have no problems in our life. Then you know what happens to you and I? when we have no problems at all in our life, then you don't trust in the Lord anymore. There's no reason for you to rely on Him ever. Yeah. The reason things do happen in your life is because you need the Lord. The Lord needs to send you some reminders. Yes. It's just that wise person will listen to Lord's chastisement, you know, His word, His warnings. But those who are foolish, which is always... Live the same old, same old life. Because you don't have any fellowship with the Lord. How many of you guys have any fellowship with the Lord on a daily basis? It's not about you saying, hi, Lord, bye, Lord, good night, Lord. Like five seconds. How many of you guys actually truly spend some time, some valuable time with the Lord on a daily basis? In the morning? In the evening, in the noontime, how many of you actually continue to spend time with the Lord? If you don't have a continuous fellowship with the Lord, forget it. You can't be sanctified. I mean, that's another condition. You have to spend time with the Lord on a daily basis. That means that you have to get on your knees and pray and actually have a conversation with the Lord. It is very easy for you and me 
to just neglect that part. Because you're tired. Who's not tired these days, right? If you have a job, if you go to school, if you, even if you don't work, you're tired, right? You know, everybody's just tired this day and age. There are no excuses. I mean, Lord Jesus Christ prayed constantly. He bore all of our sins. But all the forefathers of faith, I mean, Daniel, David, they prayed. Apostle Paul prayed constantly, right? I mean, George Mueller prayed. Everybody just prayed. I mean, who's who amongst Christians? Their life was exemplified by what? Prayer. They spent time with the Lord. Even though they committed sin. I mean, heinous sins, right? Yeah. Adultery, murder, everything else in between. But what separated them apart? They have fellowship with the Lord continuously. You want to be separated unto God? You have to have fellowship with Him. You have to spend time with Him on a daily basis. Even if you're tired, you have to spend time with Him. Even if you're about to die, you have to spend time with Him. Even if your flesh says, no, 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 consider it dead. It's a dead being. You do it. See? The new man is willing. It's just that you're not listening to new man. You're always listening to old man. See, sanctification is progressive. It's a daily process. It has to happen on a daily basis, right? And you have the answer to be sanctified through the Word of God. And you can be sanctified by having fellowship with, with the Lord all the time. You know, at the end of the day, when we look back at our Christian walk, when we look at our sanctification, it will just come down to simple things, right? Have you spent time in the Word of God? Have you spent time with the Lord? Have you hated sin? Have you run away? Have you run away from sin? You know, running from sin, you know? When you see sin, do you have that? Very, very, how should I say, dirty feeling. So you just have to run away from it, right? How many of you guys like to go to like trash dumps? How many of you guys want to open your trash bin and smell something that was in there for like 10 days, right? Especially some liquids involved, you know? If you throw some liquids in the trash can and then it stays for a while, I mean, it pollutes everything, right? There's moles everywhere. There's like, you know, gnats everywhere, right? Yeah. And then that smell is, you know, something that you can't forget. It's like rotten egg plus more, you know? But that's not your Christian walk is right now. You're, it smells of rotten eggs. It smells because you're not sanctified. You're not holy. You don't care about it too much. Yeah. But it's time for you to re-examine. Man, have I lost my sight and my focus on the future? Have I lost my sight and focus on the Lord Jesus Christ? Have I lost my desire and commitment to be separated unto the Lord? Am I going to spend more time in the Word of God? Am I going to spend more time with the Lord? Am I going to start running from sin once and for all? It's up to you. As Christians, we have free will. You can either be sanctified to the Lord, unto the Lord, or you can be sanctified to your flesh, to the world, and to the devil. The choice is yours. Let's pray.